So, seems like it's been a while since we've done one of these. Yeah, it is. Man, oh man. Yeah, we had a huge backlog of episodes and we produced them all and scheduled them out. Yeah. And then we're like, I don't know, we stuff happened and we kept skipping filming days. Yeah, we had like club meetings and all kinds of things. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So what do we got here? Flashlights on. So yeah. My flashlights yeah. on. Your flashlights on. Isn't <laughs> that like, a sign that I'm old? <laughs> I was like, Mike. I didn't know this beer has got you that, <laughs> that excited. It's like E.T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. That is. That's silly. We're in trouble. We should stop. Anyway, so here we have a, uh, I tried doing a, a uh, what is it called? The Hellas. Hellas. Yeah, I tried doing a Hellas export beer. So I really enjoy those styles. I used to say I really dislike lagers, but <coughs> it's, I dislike American <coughs> lagers, I think. And I shouldn't even say I dislike them. I disliked them. Now I'm growing to appreciate them. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, I don't know. I still don't drink any, you know, mass-produced no. light lagers. But, I mean, I've had a few, like, I think I had a Rolling Rock a while ago. And I was like, hey, you know, that's, that's yeah. actually okay. Yeah, and that's kind of yeah. how I think I think my, my problem is that, you know, back in the day, that was all we had. Yeah. And, you know, so now I'm like, oh, phew, forget that. Yeah, it's just, you know. So, yeah, once Budweiser every now and again, yeah. you know, Bud Light, of course, like, no, because those are just silly. But, you know, Budweiser every now and again is like, okay, I can see why people drink this. Yeah. It's good for what it is. Yeah. So, anyway. So, anyway, that I mean, leads me to yeah. say that I uh, decided I'm going to start trying my hand at lagers. So... Speaking about the beer specifically, well, it's not too bad. I messed up on the carbonation on this. It's not too bad. So Mike is able to coax a little bit of a head out of that. And but this is your second shot at the Hellas Lager, but you said it was a different recipe, right? Yes. Um, let's see here. So the first one. Yeah, the, the first one was the Kvike yeast. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I think that kind of set me on the course of disliking quite yeast for anything other than like an IPA. Yeah. I think for IPAs are probably great, but anything else, mm, I'm sketchy on them. Well, I did a brown with one and yeah. it was pretty good. Was I liked it. Um, uh, and I ended up putting raspberry in it. I mean, you know, like I, I've heard others say, I don't need to crank a beer out in three days. Yeah. So, I mean, really that means I'm gonna have to do something with it midweek. I'd rather wait till the weekend anyway, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, so and I'm, I've gotten to the point now where I'll get something done and I'm I forget about it for two weeks until I know it's done so but this one I, I did more traditionally yeah. so all day long or not even all day when he came over for a long time cup, uh, this weekend and you know a couple days before that and today's like oh you're gonna hate this beer this beer is terrible I think it's fine yeah, yeah. yeah. all right it, it actually has that that lager flavor that I would expect from like a Lowenbrow or a you know, I don't know, Coors Banquet. Hmm, yeah, okay, well, good. Uh, yeah, I was, maybe I just didn't give it quite long enough because before it was had more of a meaty, rounded, grainy flavor. And I was like, yeah, oh, I mean, do you get that now? Bad. No, it's 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 starting to lighten up a little This bit. one's carbonated well. Hmm. I mean, sure, it could stand to be more carbonated, but yeah. that's not too bad. When I first tried it, so, the carbonation thing, um, I made the, mistake of using two different brewing programs so I think I started it with um, uh, Brewer's Friend and I was like let me give this brew father thing a try so I uh, started I used the ice bindle with this so I started tracking it with um, brew father and at the end of the fermentation once it was all done and we'll have another episode on my experience with the ice bindle with this thing it was kind of cool but anyway at the very end I was brew father is kind of cool enough to say, hey, you're at this temperature, so you need this much sugar for this much, you know, this volume. Sweet. Well, that's that's the, those numbers weren't accurate, so I didn't. I under under primed it. Okay. So it was not enough. Sugar. So did you run it through another software package? To yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. So I I uh, used I like Brewer's Friend calculators. They're mm -hmm. fantastic. So I used that one, kind of figured it out. Then what I wound up doing was I just uncapped them all. I put, uh, I think, an eighth of a teaspoon in each bottle, recapped them, let them sit for another couple of weeks. So, yeah, it's not ideal, but, yeah, you know. Well, at least, you, I mean, you'd have to dump them or drink flat beer. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, that work, I don't really get any oxidation out of it. Yeah, no, it's, so. it's yeah, so that's good to know. I, uh, 
Yeah, when I first tried them, it was it was kind of gross because it was just it was flat, and they didn't realize it spoke to how much carbonation actually adds to the flavor of a beer. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Well, it thins it out and it makes it seem a little more bitter and creamy. Right. Yeah, and that's yeah. really what it was. What I was missing was that bitterness. It was just really malty and not sweet. Just that, like I said before, that malty and kind of almost meaty kind of like a mm. little so. No, I but, think that's just fine. Yeah, okay. good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, good. I got a lot of it to drink. So, so one thing that confused me about some of the carbonation calculators, and this isn't Jesse. What happened with Jesse? But uh, I was using one. I might have been Brewer's friend, and they <laughs> asked what temperature the beer's at now, and I was like, "What's that matter?" And I was thinking it was serving temperature that oh. they're shooting for, mm -hmm. and and really the reason they ask you that is because. When the beer's fermenting, if it's cold, it can hold more carbonation, so you need less sugar to carbonate it to your target. Yep. And uh, it's not the target that you're gonna serve it at either, it's just where the word is now. And actually, you should put the warmest temperature the beer's been since it finished fermenting. So, you know, so if you had it up to, if you had it to like 60 something for a diacetyl rest, and then um, crashed it, cold crashed it, and that's when you're ready to bottle it. That. You don't want to put 32 in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, I could definitely see that because all that the gas would have escaped during the de rest. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you crash it, there's no more. No yeah. More. There's not enough pressure in there to get yeah, in there. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And uh, hmm. yeah. So. Yeah, that's just fun. You mean the diacetyl rest? Yeah, diacetyl. <laughs> we had a conversation about that over the weekend. Was it diacetyl or diacetyl? Because it is diacetyl. I think it is diacetyl. Yeah. 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 No one says that, but yeah. So, uh, so anyway, um, so I, I brewed this, fermented this more traditionally. I used the... Um, oh, yeah, the recipe. Yeah, let me give you the recipe. Roll and back. we'll have that in the show notes. Yeah. There'll be a link to it. What's the name of this beer? I haven't named it. Okay. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> so so we'll like, come up with a name. I didn't want to get attached to it. Yeah. You know, it's like naming the cow that you're going to slaughter. So, um, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, it's just right now it's just Hellas number two. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, nine pounds of Pilsner is actually kind of a complicated malt bill as I was writing it down. Nine pounds of Pilsner, four ounces of melanoidin, eight ounces of light music, Munich, four ounces of carapils, and I threw in uh, four ounces of acidulated malt as well. Um, two ounces of Haller Tower Middle Fruit at 60, and uh, two ounces of the same hop at five. And then I used the Safflager. W3470. What was the alpha acid on the Halitar middle fruit? Um, I did not make a note. Yeah, uh, I'm just curious. That seems like a lot of hops. Yeah, I thought yeah. so too. Yeah, so it's probably, I would I guess, three and a half percent. Eh, okay, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's fair. That's fair. I think it's about right for yeah. Halitar. Yeah. <clears throat> so, my original plan for this beer was I was going to try to warm ferment it. And, uh, I decided against that, so I got a spiffy toy for Christmas. So, I'll, so let's see it. I'll show show people here. So they already know what it is because they read the title. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the. So this is not a club. It is or not. a bad replica of Thor's it's, hammer. It's my shillelagh. <laughs> oh, I should name it. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought about naming it as as a Molnir. <laughs> Beer in your beer, <laughs> beer in your. Is, are you okay? Is there something wrong with your cloth palette? So this is a. The, did you say brew jacket? The brew, yeah. yeah. Well, the brew this jacket. is the actual. Oh, that's what I forgot. I forgot the actual jacket. I have the device, but I don't have the jacket. But that's okay. Yeah. So the jacket's just like a neoprene insulated thing that goes it's around. It's not even right? neoprene. It's a. It's nylon, and inside it has like a, a foam. Do you have it handy? Uh, yeah. You want to grab it? Sure, if you want to. Yeah, sure. So, okay, so... We'll be right back. Back. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah! This big thing. So, and it's just got kind of like a... That's not, oh, that's oh. heavy duty. Yeah. That's really so, yeah, insulated. It's pretty, pretty insulated. Think it's waterproof? Um, that would make a good beer cooler in a pinch. Oh, maybe. Uh, you know, it might be. Because it came as one piece, so it's like a bag and you actually... I had to put like the bottom part in there. Oh right yeah, and zippered. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so and it's uh so you slide your entire fermenter inside of this, absolutely. right? Absolutely. So yeah, so the whole thing just 
goes right in there. Or we can set move these a little over if you want to set it up up here. Yeah. So yeah, the whole fermenter goes in there. And then you take the, ooh. Do you want me to come in and get a better shot with the camera? Yeah, maybe later. Oh. So yeah, then you just slide that thing in there. And it's got a little cork on the bottom of it. It does. So it fits right in the uh, the better bottle or your fermenter. Yep. And then here's the temperature gauge. So this this device up here is just a board in here that uh, that's what controls the temperature that the rod is trying to maintain. <clears throat> so you plug it in to a wall outlet. There's a fan in here, and the fan does all the work, either cooling or heating. And it doesn't cool or heat the the rod per se, but it uses uh, thermoelectric, some thermoelectric principle. I can't remember what it's called. Like yeah, where you can pull the heat off right, of something or right. put the heat on it. Yeah. yeah. So, and it takes, you know, it takes a long time to heat or cool. But, uh, you know, it, it seems to do the trick. So, yeah, so anyway, this is called the brew jacket <coughs> for obvious reasons. Um, it's got, this is the whole device. It's supposed to be able to heat or cool, I think they say 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, plus or minus from ambient. I think that's a little ambitious of them to say that. Um, oh, I should, I'm sorry, this is a, the Project Pro, the Immersion Pro. They have an immersion that only cools oh, this one. You can see that. Yeah, this one heats and, heats and cools. <clears throat> so, um, but yeah, so then that just heats or cools the rod and uh, and the rod's just it's solid metal, metal, right? Yeah, I think it's a some sort of coated aluminum. Okay. And you can't put like fi uh, star sand on it, right? Right. So the, it's sensitive to the, um, the pH. So you can't put star sand on. You have to use iodine, or you can either boil it. You can boil it too. Just throw it in the boil kettle because it's immune to that. Or uh, you can bake it also for at like f something something degrees for a period of time as well. I don't want to say the number because someone's going to be like, I just ruined my thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, can you can use iota 4 because I think that's iodine based. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I use the the iodine star sand equivalent from the same company from oh, okay. Five Star. Uh -huh. So it's, mm -hmm. yeah, IO star or something. But uh, you can just dilute that into a spray bottle. I spray it down, let it sit for a few minutes to let it kind of do its thing and, and then throw it in there. Now, in, in this case with the better bottle, you said you'd have to put another hole in it to vent air? Yeah, so as, as you can see, there would be no way for it to um, vent the CO2. So for bottles like this, <coughs> excuse me, you just drill a hole in the side, and then you pop this little grommet in here. I was thinking you'd probably even put yeah, pro it Yeah, I'd probably use that better, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then they, they use that for blow off. Yep, yeah. yeah, and then they send this little, this neat little doodad here which is a one-way valve so you can put that as the blow off and I, I hooked it up to a blow off tube you know and the sanitizer the whole the whole thing I didn't need to because it's a logger and loggers don't really get too too crazy as far as the, the crowds goes. yeah um, but you know um, so anyway so when I did it I did it in a bucket and I just got a standard brew bucket used a hole saw cut a hole in there pop it in there and it worked great. Now, didn't, what did you? Didn't you do some stuff to help it cool it down? Or yeah, so that was one of the, the the beefs that I had with this is that, I mean, like where I ferment it was like sixty five degrees. I needed to get down to fifty five, and I think I had it going for twelve hours and it went down like five degrees, yeah. which I think for this is you know that's fairly expected. So I just took some ice packs, threw it in between the bucket and the uh, brew jacket, the brew jacket uh -huh. and oh yeah, yeah it just yeah. dropped it down well that makes sense too i bet you get it down there a lot faster yeah. and then if you got all that cold air that cold in there then it'd be easy for it to maintain the temp and that's exactly what it is is that even reading different reviews and people's opinions on this online is that basically the takeaway is that it does better at maintaining a temperature than getting to a temperature yeah so with that said if you read the <clears throat> The propaganda from these guys, for lack of a better phrase, they talk about you know you can lager and you can't lager with this thing. You cannot lager. You can ferment a lager, mm -hmm. but you cannot lager because it just it just doesn't get cold enough. So have you tried dropping it to 
Yeah, I guess that wouldn't matter anyway. I was gonna say, have you tried putting enough ice packs in it to get it down to below 50? So, because I mean, technically you're lagering at 50. See, oh, I thought loggers had to go more like 45. And I know yeah, that's, okay. I know it's, that's yeah, I think it's a loosey goosey type of thing. Yeah. I mean, I think if you keep it at 50 or 55, you're technically <clears throat> lagering it. That could be, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Ain't German brewers out there? Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a, a noob for sure. So, yeah, if I could do actually lager in that that'd be that'd be interesting yeah yeah so but i'd be willing to bet even if you got it down to that temp with the ice packets yeah it would work its way back up it it did yeah um so yeah if you and then like i said uh, in a future ice bindle episode i'll actually share the the graph and then you know it started and it's kind of going down then it drops and then it maintains that and then it starts creeping back up and it drops again because i, I refreshed it but rather than doing it where people are trying to do ice packs to do a lager where they have to do it like every 12 hours put ice packs I had to do it like what twice over the course of a week and a half yeah so and that's like, not bad at all yeah for that. days it maintained that temperature yeah. like in the 50s so it was so I, mean, I gotta say great. so how much was the device so um I got it from Adventures in Hope Brewing for $150 mm -hmm. and that was right before they were doing a sale right before um and right after Christmas actually um, I just looked today, and then they were on on sale for two oh nine, mm -hmm. and, and they retail for whatever that's worth for three hundred. Okay. So that's why I, I pulled the trigger on it because it was like, man, it's half price. So. Yeah, yeah, one hundred and fifty is not bad. Three hundred is a little pricey. That, yeah, I wouldn't and unless you're really cramped for space. Yeah. So that's and that's one of the advantages of this. And you know, I kind of made a quick list of pros and cons, and that's one of the pros of this is that if you don't have room or don't want to spend a couple hundred dollars to get you know a fermentation chamber set up this is yeah know, well i mean if you yeah the room especially because i mean the footprint of the thing isn't much bigger than a carboy yeah, yeah, or, yeah. you know it's only a little bit it's just the jacket on the mm -hmm. outside so yeah I, i'd see that be an easy way to do loggers and you yeah. don't even have to do loggers that often but yeah. even for the ales you know if you're in a hot environment so well and you speaking of ales one of the things that really made me decide to do this wasn't so much for the loggers but doing like belgians mm -hmm because uh, you have to take it up to ramp it up to like 75 80 degrees this and, heats and as your, well and your thing is 65 yeah right? it's around yeah. 65 so i can you know try to maintain 75 degrees or so mm -hmm. you know you do a i'm planning on doing a saison and i'm going to be using using that for the or this for that yeah so yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah. and it'll probably be easier to warm it up than it would yeah. be to cool it down. Well, yeah, that's my, my hope is, I mean, when we had that episode, if you if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go uh, watch it. We had uh, our friend John on talking about Belgian beers. And uh, we've discussed whether you want to chase the temperature or not. I figured this would be perfect because there's there's a uh, uh, buttons on the top. And that's, this is the, you know, as, as complicated as this gets is you set the temperature that you want it to be. And if you get your eye spindle in there, it'll tell you where it's at. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. That's, yeah, uh, and coincidentally, that's about the same diameter as an eye spindle. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> if, the, if this fits eye spindle, fit. <laughs> but, um, so... Well, that's interesting. I didn't think you'd be able to use one with a better bottle. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I, I checked it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, after, I would... I bought these off mic, and I was just like, I wonder if that... Hey, if it's... <laughs> getting it out might be a little yeah. dicey, but... Yeah, it'll get in there for sure. Mike picked up a horde of uh, a guy who's getting out brewing. He sold all his stuff, and I wanted one thing, but the price was right. So there's a lot of extra stuff. Um, you know, I gave Jesse a bunch of stuff. So he's kegging. He's gonna be yeah. kegging like he that far away. Right. Yeah. 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 For sure. So yeah, I'm. Uh, well, now I, I think I just need a beer now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something that I can actually keg. <clears throat> That's a different episode, though. We yeah. want to talk about that one. So. Uh, but yeah, so what? Yeah, what else? Um, so one of the disadvantages that people might really shy away from this for is that you can't use a glass carboy for the simple reason you can't drill a hole in the glass carboy. Right? Yeah, and that that's bigger than the opening out of the glass carboy. It I is. Think. Yeah, yeah, because the glass carboys are really good. Yeah, they, they're surprisingly small. So yeah, so that wouldn't work. Um, yeah, the temperature range is like I said, they say thirty-five plus or minus. Or 30 maybe plus or minus 20 20 C. I'd say more 
10 Fahrenheit, plus or minus. Maybe it dep depends on how long you have. <coughs> Maybe, <laughs> yes. Well, then they, that was the funny thing is I can't remember how they said that, but they said that it'll cool one degree in 12 hours the first like five degrees and then half a degree the next 10 hours for so maybe it'll get there eventually it might yeah but so i'm cold crashing now <laughs> yes. in two short months <laughs> yeah, i might have a beer to drink so but still it is a good solution for especially yeah. if you're picking up a used one um yeah if you don't find a used one yeah yeah i, don't, I wouldn't see why why not why i wouldn't do that um but yeah it's slow can't longer stand yeah i don't know but it's uh Oh, that's kind of neat. It yeah. worked. It worked well. So we'll see how how it heats on the saison. Um, oh, there's something else I was going to mention. What was it? I don't remember. It, oh, that was what it was. So it's if you have a an apartment or something, or if you're fermenting right next to your bed or something, this probably wouldn't work out too well because it's not loud, but the fan goes constantly. So unless you're in that kind of thing. Which yeah. case, you know, go for it. I, I run a fan yeah. in the bedroom all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, so that'd be fine. I'll start fermenting. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your wife would love yeah. that. Yeah. But um, oh, that was the the temperature thing. Um, what I wound up doing was I pointed a just a regular fan at this to kind of blow the, the heat away from it. Mm -hmm. And that brought it down several more degrees. Oh, okay. So just little tricks like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know how I'm gonna make it warmer. I might put it like a, a heater. Yeah, like a heating pad or something in the in there. Just oh yeah, on temporarily. Just yeah. kind of if I want to raise the temperature quickly. Yeah, but in that case, if you're just, I mean, yeah, it, it wouldn't be hard to run two systems, where maybe you've got the, you know, this for cooling, and then if you know you're gonna warm it, you got a heating blanket on an ink burner. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, because heating is generally pretty easy. Yeah, that's. I mean, I can see the bonus in this is, it's in there. Everything's set up. You just gotta go boop, 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 boop. Yep. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Yeah. At least the heating is. Yeah, the heating is easier because your yeast are making it warm anyway. So you're just kind of assisting with. Yeah. It. Yeah. Well, I mean, and heat wraps are cheap. You know, <clears throat> all, all you need is a heat wrap or yeah. a brew belt and a, a ink bird. Yeah. Actually, with this, and I think that's the really the. I don't know. I think if I had limited really limited funds and I could buy the insulation separately that would probably be your bigger bag for the buck is getting a nice big insulated bag you just drop in an ice pack yeah, yeah or heaters or whatever yeah just to kind of do that I don't know but anyway hey it's on the market yeah you know, if it's a there's a niche of brewers that I work really great for um, <clears throat> probably good for handling ale temps readily yep you yeah, know and sure. lagers if you don't have the room or don't want to buy a chest freezer yeah Yep. So, nice. yeah, so there it is. But I know I got nothing else for it. Oh, well, sweet. But um, again, yeah, future episode, I'll uh, talk about the, the ice spindle and how it performed with the. I did two brews with the ice spindle so far, so we'll do a little update. I just did my first one with it. Nice. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk offline. We can compare notes. Yeah. So well, until next time. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes, as the case may be. <laughs>